bless and good day to all tuning in to Christ Jesus' Lord Ministries. I want to welcome you back to the school room of Christ Jesus' Lord Ministries. This is where we break down the scripture so that you can have a clear and concise understanding of what the Bible is teaching and what the apostles, the prophets, or the writers intend for us to understand or to walk away after we have read the Bible or studied it. Well, contrary to popular beliefs, there are many going about who have made themselves um, to be something more than they are. They are teaching heresies, they are teaching fallacies, they are teaching a doctrine that is contrary to that of the apostles to Jesus and to the holy prophets. And the Bible says, as Paul wrote, if any man come to you and teach anything other than that which is written in the word of God, consider him to be accursed. Now there are many accursed teachers, preachers, pastors, prophets. Out there, many are nothing but self-proclaimed apostles, self-proclaimed teachers, and they are leading many people astray. Well, Today, without much talking in this introduction to this subject, the subject will be Is there a limit to one's righteousness or wickedness? Uh, what are the Bible verses really saying? Do not be righteous over much. Do not be wicked over much. On the subject of righteousness and wickedness, can one be too righteous? Can one be too wicked? Or is righteous being just righteous? Is wicked being wicked? We're going to look at a particular passage in Ecclesiastes chapter 7. And many years ago, when I was a young Christian in the faith, I read it. And I have always questioned the verses. But by researching and reading commentaries, I have gain an understanding of what Solomon uh, is saying or was trying to communicate. However, we have to understand the background of Solomon and when he wrote the book of Ecclesiastes and why he wrote the book of Ecclesiastes to understand what he wrote in the book of Ecclesiastes. So without further ado, let us pray. Father, I pray for your divine guidance. I pray for your divine protection. I pray for all those tuning in. And I pray that you will bless the supporters of this channel, all subscribers, all viewers. And I pray, dear Father, that your word will accomplish what it was meant to accomplish. As Isaiah 55 and verse 11 states, Father, let thy will be done with this YouTube channel as we seek to proclaim the truth of Jesus Christ. I pray that you continue to bless us and keep us and to guide us and help us to live a sanctified life in Christ Jesus is my prayer in Jesus name. Amen. Let us go. So Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 16 through to 18 is our key portion of passage of our text. It's the pericope that we'll be um, focusing this short and brief um, study on. It reads, be not righteous over much neither make thyself over wise why should thou destroy thyself be not over much wicked neither be thou foolish why shouldest thou die before thy time it is good that thou shouldest take hold of this yea also from this withdraw not thine hand for he that feareth god shall come forth of them all so here we see solomon putting forth something one would say it is his hypothesis. One would say is putting forth a theory. Others will say it is based on his life experience as a king, as the wisest man who lived, who have tried everything out. And in the beginning of the book of Ecclesiastes, he started by saying vanity of vanities, all is vanity. In other words, everything he's saying is meaningless. So 
we need to understand that the book of Ecclesiastes was written after Solomon repented of his apostasy. We need to remember that Solomon had over a thousand wives and concubines. And many in his old age led him into apostasy against Yahweh. And he went and he did human sacrifice. He caused his sons to pass through the fire. And when the Bible uses that expression, in other words, he did human sacrifice. He was in the occult. He worshipped other gods. And because of that, he lost the 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 tribes um there was a division and only judah was remained because of david's sake now after solomon with all the wisdom that god gave him with all the riches that he had with all the fame that he had with all the good things of life and you read uh, the book of ecclesiastes it will tell you that he searched out everything and he did a lot of observation he had a lot of experience and he had a lot of learning and he as many commentators Bible commentators and you can read the Bible commentaries they're saying that Solomon here is speaking from the vantage point of one who is not godly or not righteous While others will forsake such a theory or such an interpretation of the verse or the passage of scripture here and saying that what is this talking about is that you should not be so morbidly scrupulous or exact in your dealings. Because by doing so, you're going to go to extremities, whether in wickedness or in righteousness. And what you need to do is to fear God. And by fearing God, as he came to the conclusion in the latter end of chapter 12, the latter two verses that the whole duty of God is to fear God and keep his commandment because God will bring into judgment everything that one doeth under the sun. So when we read the aforementioned verses of scripture, there are some imperative questions that will arise in one's mind, such as can a Christian be too righteous? And that can you be too righteous? The Bible says that we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus and the Bible says we should be perfect even as our father is perfect so can one be too righteous can a person be too wicked that's the second question and can a person be too foolish and this is in the context of speaking with a people who call themselves to be call themselves children of God but then again as I said they are commentators, they are interpreters who will say that Solomon was speaking from the point of not being a Christian. Finally, the final question that this passage of scripture will cause one to ask is, are there righteous, wicked and foolish individuals among God's children are among God's people and the answer is definitely so yes I relate a true life story to you all my viewers uh, many years ago over a decade a colleague of mine who is a police officer was doing a presentation of which he related to us of an incident which occurred apparently a group of men decided to rob a house and within that house a couple was living so while they were there committing their robbery one of the men decided to rape the wife now this couple was a Christian couple so when one of the men decided to rape the wife the husband stepped in and said no don't rape her rape me 
it so happened that there was a homosexual within the group of men or among the robbers and he in turn raped the husband sodomized the the husband and after they have committed their acts and went their way they called the police and <laughs> while they were there the, the wife was laughing after the husband and he was there telling the wife don't tell them don't tell them don't tell them so the officers wanted to find out what happened so they told the police officers what really happened in the robbers one of them wanted to rob one one of them wanted rather to rape the wife and he allowed the homosexual to rape him instead now that is being over righteous that is being foolish because there's nowhere in scripture as much as the bible says in ephesians chapter uh five that husband loves your wife and give you life even as christ gave his life for the church so the bible says we should love our wife unconditionally and we should protect them but there's no way in the bible where it tells us that we ought to break any of god's commandments because we love our wife that is self-righteous that is even seeing yourself more righteous than god and this is what the wise man solomon is saying do not be over righteous don't be over foolish either and in the case of the story i related the husband is over righteous and is foolish and solomon says by doing so you destroy yourself you die before your time because by that homosexual sodomizing that husband he could have contracted hiv aids and all manner of venereal diseases that would cause him to go to his grave prematurely and to die an untimely death also he has to live with the stigma which goes around because i know that didn't stay alone with his wife because it was related to the police officer and she must would have told her friends and even family of what happened so he has to live with a shame to know that he allow a man to sodomize him or to booger him in the name of being righteous because he didn't want his wife to be raped so solomon is cautioning against the extremes of being foolish the extremes of being righteous the extremes of even being wicked so we need to study the word of god as Paul wrote unto Timothy in 2 Timothy 2.15 that we might show ourselves approved unto God, rightly dividing the word of truth. There are many who are calling themselves Christian, reading the word, but do not understand it. And there are many who are not studying, so they do not know what God requires of them. Here, as you look at the screen, Micah chapter 6, 6 to 8, you could read it in your own time. As I said, I don't want to be long with this study, this presentation. In the, the, the prophets, priests, kings, people on a whole from time immemorial have been asking, what is it that this sovereign God, this creator, whatever his name is, what is it that he requires of us? Some have gone on quest to travel miles, mountain, travel the high seas. They have taken unto themselves to build monuments. They have done all manner of things and they wanted to know what God requires. Well, verse 8 of it says, he shows you what is good and what the Lord requires of you to do justly, to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. And in walking humbly with your God, is that you're going to allow the Spirit of God to lead you and you're going to be obedient to God's commands and to all that he says.
careful on this verse of scripture. We should not neglect chapter 7 verse 15 which says all things have I seen in the days of my vanity. There is a just man that perisheth in his righteousness, and there is a wicked man that prolongeth his life in his wickedness. So against this bad job, Solomon was able to write verse 16 through to 18, telling you that you must not be over righteous or over wicked, because he's saying, note, the just, the righteous man is destroyed for being righteous. And the wicked man, life is prolonged, even amid his wickedness. And Solomon's conclusion of Ecclesiastes 7, 16 to 18. Now, Solomon wrote Ecclesiastes, as I said, after he repented of his apostasy. Solomon was not addressing spirituality or talking about the righteousness of God because one cannot be too righteous in God. By taking on God's righteousness, one cannot be too righteous. Solomon is cautioning cautioning against exactness and over rigorism with regard to justice. He's speaking of hypocrisy and 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 self righteous pharisaical and pharisaical attitude wherein if we should study the history of the Jews we see that the Jews um there was a time where they were destroyed because they failed to defend themselves on the Sabbath because it was a Sabbath day. So many of them got killed and that was stupidity on their part. So Solomon is cautioning against that. He's cautioning against both extreme of wickedness and spirituality or righteousness. That's why he said do not be over righteous because by being so you are going to destroy yourself and as Benson says here in his commentary too much severity becomes cruelty and so too much wisdom that is subtlety becomes caviling sophistry and cheating so is cautioning against the extremities of righteous one seeing themselves as righteous in other words he's saying you must not be self-righteous you should let the word of god be your guide and be the ruling principle in your life and when you have the word of god the law of god the commandments of god in your life such will caution you against either extremes righteousness from a humanly standpoint and wickedness as a humanly standpoint. Now, what can we take from the whole uh, passage of scripture? What is Solomon cautioning us against? Or what is he telling us in Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verses 16 through 18 and we should not leave out verse 17 because verse 15 goes along with verse says 16 17 and 18 the conclusion that we can take from the whole matter of this portion of scripture is that to be right does not mean you should manipulate yourselves or allow others to manipulate you God does not manipulate people and neither can he manipulate, be manipulated. Therefore, you as a child of God should not manipulate people or allow people to manipulate you. Neither the devil nor demon, Satan or any of his minions to manipulate you. You need to get that. You need to know that God sets the standard for righteousness and not man. You do not set the standard for righteousness, neither do I. If we want to know the standard for righteousness, we got to read the word of God, study it, and we will see the, 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 right, the standard for righteousness, which is God's moral law. His Ten Commandments, which is found in Exodus chapter 20, which is called, which, is, which God wrote with the finger of his hand. I'm not just saying that there are only Ten Commandments. There are many commandments, and all other commandments hinge on this Ten, which God wrote with the finger of his hand. And even John saw, in heaven 
in the Ark of the Covenant. Now, we also need to understand that when you are righteous, you will not see yourself as being righteous, but rather you will be see yourself needing more of God and wanting to be more like Him. None of the men in Scripture who the Bible records telling us that they are righteous and they were righteous, whether it be Job, Daniel, Moses, saw themselves as being righteous. It is God who determines who is righteous from who is not righteous. And to see yourself as righteous is to be a bigot. It's bigotry. Now, we need to understand, as I've read earlier in this study, from Micah chapter 6, verse 6 through to 8, that justice, mercy, and humility is God requires of us. He shows us what is good. That is the good. And I have already explained what it means to be humble with God. No, the opposite is equally true of being righteous. To be wicked means that you're going to see yourself as being righteous whatever you do there is justification for it you have no remorse for the evils you do or the transgression you do and you are the one who will set the standard for what is right or wrong you become that autonomous man likewise you will see yourself as righteous another person evil justice will be far, far from you you will be merciless you will be unjust, you will be merciless, and you will be lacking humility, self-exaltation. You will be proud, filled with pride. You do not see yourself being in need of God. That's the definition for pride as I've read. Pride is seeing yourself as not being in need of God. Now, we need to also understand and remember that it is God who will judge you in the end. It is God who will judge me in the end. So whether men or yourself consider you to be righteous, just know that it is God who sets a standard and you will find it in the book called the Bible. Now, my final point that when we are leading, when we are put in charge, whether it be people, business, organization, or even our very own, we should not seek to be exact and not to extend mercy, but we should seek to be merciful, understanding, and just in the sight of God and in all men whom we deal with, knowing that just as all we seek to want to experience forgiveness from God and mercy from God, so it is that we ourselves should be merciful to others and be forgiving and loving towards one another. May God bless you, keep you, guide you, and help you to understand what it means to be righteous, what it means to be wicked, and what it means to be foolish, so that you do not fall, find yourself in the extremities of these um way of life um for those of you who um uh subscribed i implore you i encourage you to hit the subscription button hit the notification button share these bible studies with a friend with a family member even with an enemy and i thank you all those of you who are supportive of this channel may god continue to bless and to keep you let us have a word of prayer. Father, I pray and I ask that you will continue to be with us. Bless all those who are tuning in. Bless the subscribers, bless the viewers, and bless the supporters of the channel. May your word go forth, accomplish its purpose, and may you continue to be with us, to guide us, and to lead us into all truth. And in righteousness we pray, in Jesus' holy and precious name, amen. Now God bless you, and have a good and godly day. Until the next upload, be safe. Love and peace.